Hey everybody, it's me, Tired Mama, and I'm here today with a real funny story. So I posted a poll a few days ago and I said, would you rather hear about my excessively stressful mini vacation or prop of the week? And you guys, without a doubt, said the stressful vacation. So here you go. Last weekend, me, one of my best friends, who's also a teacher with Puffish, and our two daughters, which are, they're only a few months apart, and our teenagers, we said, let's have a girls weekend, okay? It's been a real rough winter. Let's just go to the beach, have a little fun, and see what happens. That's the plan. And we did succeed at that. <laughs> In the meantime, though, let me give you a little prior story. I drive a newer model uh, Chevy Malibu. If you've known me for a long time, you'll know that this is my first newer model car. Before I started doing online ESL, you know, we paid cash for cars because we always bought the cheap pieces of crap and we drove them until the wheels fell off. And so this was our like first car with a payment, you know, moving up in life. And about a month ago, it started like hesitating almost. When I, when I was driving, I said, okay, well, let's just take it to the shop and get it checked out. And so they said, oh, it needs plugs and wires and oil change, that kind of thing. Did it all. Not a problem. Tuned it up. It stopped. Then, <laughs> The week before we left, it did it again. So we took it back to the shop and the mechanic who owns this business told me, he said, Samantha, I don't know what's wrong with your car. It's not doing it to me. The car's running fine. The tires are good. The engine's good. The computer's good. The electronics are working well. The transmission's changing gears perfectly fine. And I said, okay, okay, okay. Would you send your wife three hours away in this car? He said, absolutely. Okay, so we go to the beach. We get down there. We go Friday. We left Friday about lunch. We get down there. It's three hours and 20 minutes. We went to a place called Navarre Beach. Navarre Beach is slightly west east of Pensacola Beach on the Florida Panhandle. Beautiful, small, quaint town. We stayed at a great place called Navarre Beach Campground. If you ever have an opportunity to visit this area or you're looking for a good family friendly type of environment, this was a great place to go. And we had a connection, so we got a deal. The place we stayed in had tiny houses, which was really cool to stay in for the weekend. Um, we were right next door to a swimming pool and a hot tub. They had their own beach access and pier, and we were just a few miles away, and I mean three or four miles away, from the public beach and um, the Panhandle Turtle Conservatory. It was really a great location. We had a lot of fun. We were trying to kind of go on the cheap, um, went to the grocery store, bought a few groceries, you know, did our own kind of breakfast and lunch deal, and it was super nice. So if you have a family, that's a great place to go. We were down there Saturday. We went down there Friday. Saturday morning, we went to the beach. And I kind of felt my car go, uh, down there. Hmm. Now, let me preface this by saying, I am the daughter of a mechanic. My dad has owned his own mechanic shop my entire life. Um, I grew up around cars. And my dad was the kind that when I threw the clutch out of my car, I had to replace it. You know, I had to know how to change a tire, change my brakes. I don't mind working on cars. In fact, my car that I have now, my husband doesn't touch because he doesn't do cars. But when, you know, a new headlight, which is a nightmare in this car, um, which includes taking off a tire and the front bumper and all kinds of weird things. I do all of that myself. I have no problem with it. So we get down there uh, Saturday. I kind of felt to go, 
And I was like, oh, this is not good. Please, please, Jesus, tell me this is not happening right now. It stopped. We went about our business. We had seafood Saturday night. We took the kids crabbing. Found a nice little inlet beach that the kids crabbed on. And there were crabs like this out there. There was one carrying a Ruffles potato chip. I'll insert that picture right here. So these were big crabs, right? The kids had a blast. We got to swim in the ocean, laid out, got some sun, if you can't tell. I brown really easy, so I don't really burn a lot. But I had a great day. Went to bed Saturday night. We had to check out by 11. No big deal. Get up, clean the house, pack the car, and we decide Navarre doesn't have a lot of like touristy type things. You know, like the um, shops with the t-shirts and the souvenirs and that kind of thing. So we said we're going to drive up the 25 minutes to Pensacola and then we'd come up home from there. And so we go through what is a national forest. It's not a national forest. It's a national park. Um, it is also a turtle conservatory. And it's like 13 or 14 miles at going 20 miles an hour. Um, to say that my car hated that is the understatement of the year. Well, maybe it's that people still like James Charles because they don't anymore. But anyway, um, that's a whole other story if you're into like YouTuber drama. But um, my car was flipping out. But we said we would take the kids to the beach and we did. So we were like, let's, let's go to the beach. Um, then we'll find somewhere for lunch. We were going to go on a dolphin cruise. And then we would head back through town. And at this point, a flashing light comes up on my dashboard that says service ESC. Okay, we Googled it. It's not something that is automatically, you know, shut the car down. You're going to blow up your engine. So we parked the car, went to the beach, hung out. Went to a place called Shaggy's for lunch. Had some great shrimp. The kids decided they weren't really up for a dolphin cruise, so we went to go-kart race or go-kart racing, I think is what it was. And this huge jungle gym. See this picture? Everyone was having a great time. At about three o'clock, we said, okay, it's time to head home. My daughter, who is 13, said, you know, I'm really not feeling great. Let me say, my daughter is exceptionally pale, um, so we overdo it on the sunscreen with her. You know, she starts off with 70 SPF in the morning. She does 100 SPF spray throughout the day when she's in the sun. She never burned, and we were only on the beach for about an hour. So I assumed that she was fatigued. Okay, long weekend with your girlfriends at the beach. It's Sunday night, you're tired of being with people. You get it, right? We get to almost outside of Pensacola. If you've ever been in Pensacola, Florida, you know that if you're going north through Alabama, you can't just like hop on the interstate. There's a lot of um, like back road driving you have to do. We're coming out of Pensacola. We're on what's considered the bad side of town and another light flashes. I pulled into an advanced auto because I know they can check codes on the car. Cool. They run the codes and there were five codes. All five codes tell me that there are problems in cylinder one and it has to do with what's called a coil pack. Coil pack is, it plugs into your engine. It's not complicated to change. I had a conversation um, with someone in the advanced auto who was a mechanic and he said, you know, it's not hard to do. I just change out that coil pack. You should be good to go. So I looked at my friend Ann, who is also pretty like, um, how do I say that word? I can do this on my own. Pretty independent, you know, let, let's figure out how to do this when it comes to vehicles and stuff herself. So we're like, we can do this. We got this. We went and bought the part, bought the tools, but we knew the engine would be hot. Okay, we're not idiots. We go across the street to Walmart. We're like, let's park it in the shade. Let the car cool down. We'll go into Walmart. They had a subway. So we got some ices. We sit down. We're just going to cool off. Let the car cool off. We'll go out there, throw this part in there. 
we're going home. How many of you think that happened? Yeah, you're right. It didn't happen. All right. So as we're sitting there, my daughter ends up getting very sick. Um, and I thank you to the young man who couldn't have been more than 17 years old working at Subway in Walmart in Pensacola who cleaned up behind her. Um, you're very much appreciated as well as Walmart. Um, she was very sick. So now I have a sick child. I have a car that is telling me it shouldn't be on the road and I'm three hours from home. Do you see where my mini vacay kind of went awry? Like things went crazy. So all of the stress that I had let go by being away from work and being away from the house are back in full force and I'm losing my mind. We finally get back outside and we had parked away from the door. Like there was like a median partition thing next to us that had two trees and uh, wood chips next to us. So we took blankets. My daughter laid down. Um, she had some water. She was in the shade. She was good. The car had cooled down. Awesome. So we're like, okay, let's, let's do this part. We're YouTubing it. We've read articles. We know what we have to do. My car has an engine cover, which is unfortunately not just decorative. It has a function. So I have to take this engine cover off. I get the exhaust off. I get another hose off. I have no idea what it is. And they say there's one screw underneath. So this is the cover and the screw is like here. The toolkit I bought comes with a screwdriver about this long. And the screw is about this far under the engine cover. Because there's six lanes of traffic between us and Advanced Auto. It's like there's no way I'm going back over there. So I maneuver it by taking my hand and laying it down under the engine cover and putting the screwdriver here and slowly maneuvering it and working it like this because the easy thing to do would have been to go by the right part, right? After about 20 minutes, I finally, um, someone comes to help, okay? I have chubby hands, guys. I don't have little, like, thin hands. I can't get the screw loosened enough. Now, I will tell you that there are lots of people milling around. There are a lot of people driving around in big trucks, and you're thinking, they work on their trucks. Why can't they stop me for two seconds? It's obvious. Like, me and my friend and two kids, right? Like, we're not mechanics. And while I can do this stuff, honest to God, I would have been so happy if somebody walked up, hey, do you need some help? And finally, a homeless guy was like, can I help you with something? And I said, I would love it if you would get this screw for me. And he did. He was like, can I help you with anything else? And I said, I appreciate it. He had a bus. He was trying to get on a bus. I said, we got it from here. Thank you so much. I don't have any cash. He goes, I don't need, I just wanted to help you. Thank you, Jesus. So we take the engine cover off, find the part, and it is an eight millimeter socket. We bought a socket set. We're good to go, right? No. The socket bobber handle thingy is busted. Mm. Busted. So I have to put these sockets on the end of this screwdriver to get this thing out. And it takes me forever. But I finally got it. I finally got it. We figured out how to change the part. Not a huge deal. We put everything back together. Get everyone in the car. And we're like, okay, we're going to start the car and see what happens. We start the car. It runs fine. Let's go. We get six miles down the road and my check engine light comes on. You kidding me? Okay. 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 We pull in to another advanced auto. I've never seen two advanced autos this close, but okay. We pull into advanced auto and they read the code and they're like, well, it's saying the connector's loose. So now I got to take this whole thing back apart. Fortunately, they were nice enough to exchange the busted pieces of the kit I bought. 
so it wasn't as bad, but it's still super stressful. Um, they were very, very nice. We managed to get everything reconnected. Here's the problem. With my car, the only way to reset the check engine light is for it to do it itself or if you have the GM D -D 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 thing. Neither one of those was happening and I'm terrified. Like I, I'm like four payments away from being paid off on my car. I do not want to blow up the engine. So after about an hour, she comes out. This, there's only one girl at this advanced auto and she reads the code and she goes, the only thing it's saying is coil pack uh, number one. So I call a friend of mine and he said, you know what? It'll reset. Get in the car, drive it a few miles and see what happens. If that's all it's saying, it's saying everything else is fine. Just go with it. Y'all, that stresses me. It stresses me. But I did it, and I'm very happy to say the light went off. We get home at like 10.30 at night. Because we were not going as fast as we normally would, we made lots of stops for drinks and potty breaks, and we didn't even eat dinner until like 9 o'clock. We dropped our friends off, met her husband, um, dropped them off, and we came home. Next morning, I called the same mechanic. He goes, bring it up here. Let me drive it. We did. We took it up there. We dropped it off. He calls me three days later, and he's like, this car is running perfect. I can't find anything wrong with it. That was yesterday. So yesterday, a friend of mine took me up there to pick up my car, drove it home. Actually, I drove it and picked my daughter up, drove it home, and I want you to know that it started skipping before I got home, which is about 15 miles. So if any of you know anything about Chevy Malibus or you drive one or you have had one and you've had a similar issue, please let me know. Because this tired mama is about this close from losing it on the car. And I hate that I'm having a bad experience because like I said, this is like the first car I've ever bought on like a payment, right? It is a nice car. I do like my car. But I'm also supposed to be going to Biloxi in a few weeks, and I need my car. And it scares me when things don't work right, okay? So that is how my very simple girls weekend mini vacation turned into probably one of the most stressful days, weeks, months of my life, okay? I hope that you enjoyed the story. Please make sure you like, subscribe, and share. Um, if you are not following me on Facebook, you really should because uh, a good friend of mine is running the Facebook page now because she has way more time than I do. And she posts some of the funniest um, memes and comments and posts I have ever seen in my life. And we have a great community that is growing every single day there. In the meantime, guys, I hope to see you real soon on another video. Bye!